and you get that feeling out and either works or it doesn't. The number one rule is always obey the rules. The number two rules to get the rules. We are going to discuss your work in this show, Multifaceted. Can you tell us a little bit about in these two pieces? There's two very different types of work in a sense. One is an anatomical drawing that's called the Banshee and Me. And the other one is one I did when I first moved to this country in 2016. I went to the Joshua Tree National Park and the colours just like, oh God. <laughs> it really, like, it, it, it freaked me out. So at the time, my senses really heightened. The colours expressed my exuberance of being in this country of what I perceive to be a promise and optimism and, you know, if you work really hard, you can achieve all kinds of things, which is really true in many ways. The drawing I did just before leaving Australia, I was kind of in limbo waiting for my O-1 visa. I was absolutely, I have to tell you, terrified because Donald Trump had just gotten in like the day after I'd applied. And as a woman, I felt really kind of awful. So that drawing is very expressive of how I felt at that time. So there's two very different perspectives, but in a sense, they're very heightened and they come from a place of being very heightened in awareness about what's going on around them. There are two pieces in the show. One mm. is a work on paper and mm. one is a, a, a painting. painting. Yeah, on and canvas. Yeah. You're using acrylic painting. No, no, I use, I use oil paints. I also do underpainting, but that underpainting comes through, so it's, it talks to the painting that's already on top. So in a sense, it needs to be there, like any layering. You know, you need layering in life. It's not just one dimensional, so, yeah. And you use, but you use a, a a mark. Oh yeah, that's you make um, a mark on it. Yeah, so the white marking is an oil stick, mm -hmm. and so I was like, went crazy with the oil stick, and it's such an immediate and kinetic way to, to draw and paint. So, you, you know, it's like uh, contemporary dance. It's like, you know, and you get that feeling out, and either works or it doesn't, and it's a gamble. It's like Francis Bacon, you know. He said, if if you're not taking that gamble, just like forget it. But the drawing, I use a big graphite stick. I got this at the Kinokuniya in downtown. There's a store and they sell um, these, they're just great. It's a stick and you can just go into the paper and um, vent your spleen in a sense. And, but, you know, in a, in a really controlled manner as well. So, um, yeah, that's two, two different ways of working. So I, for me, drawing and painting kind of cross over a little bit. There's always a bit of element of drawing in my painting. I'm familiar with your more monumental works as well. Okay, so there, you do these big... I did one painting on canvas that was 29 feet. It was big. <laughs> a lot of ladder work on that one. Um, a lot of paint as well. I can work really big and just get lost in that, but give me a little canvas sometimes. And I, 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 I've got one sitting on my wall that's been there probably for like eight months now. It's, I just don't know how to fix it or where to take it because it's like this small little... It's like a little window, you know. I don't want to mess it up. And you're predominantly a uh, painter, but you also do other things as well. I know that you've done some film. My filmmaking, it's, it looks like my paintings because it's layered. So it's a similar style of doing something just but with a different colored pencil in a sense. You know? Well, I think one of the themes of this show is that the artists that are involved are multifaceted in their practice, in the materials that they choose to use, in, in their focus. Kay, do you have a particular practice with how you go into the studio and start your day? Booking in my time at the studio, to me that's a non-negotiable, you know, is my work time. And as far as how I work when I get there, I kind of have a routine. There's paintings, I have about five paintings up at the moment. Um, some are drying, some are finished, some are just started. I'll also be working on things at the computer, but I've got it set up so I can look at the painting. And I might be sweeping the floor, but I'm thinking about the painting. Or I might be working on a short film, but I'm thinking about the painting, and I'm looking at and I dream about the painting, and I obsess about the painting, and then I take photos of it and play with it on my phone, composition, do this, that, and the other. And then, and then I change my mind. And the number one rule is always obey the rules. The number two rules forget the rules. It's like 
this constant dance of death because you're going along with what's right, you're sticking to the rhythm, but then you've got to switch it up. So you've got to, you've got to take a risk and taking that risk is part of the rule. And it's this game, it's just constant sort of problem solving, throwing it out the window. It just sort of goes in circles and it's never ending. Well, do you, do you ever have a time when you, you get into the studio and you just don't know where to take it? And what do you do to jog your your mind? I think I'm kind of like a week ahead of myself. So I always have a, a to-do list, in a sense, if that's a way to talk about it. But yeah, I don't really have a time. The only time I felt that was when I was locked out of the studio during the shutdown. And I kind of came face to face with myself as not a painter. Suddenly I was just like, okay, Freeman, you know, what do I do? And um, I nearly went out of my mind. I mean, I, I found a little bit of paper and some crayons and I just started drawing and that was really confronting actually and enlightening about myself. Can you talk a little bit about how you generate form and what inspires you to generate form? There's kind of two answers to that question. Mm -hmm. And if I split it up just briefly, like with the Eastern theory of describing form in Chinese or Japanese art, you do it with a single line. So you have a thick line and then a thin line to sort of describe the form. As Western um, art, there's shadows to describe the form. And I'm playing with both because I kind of, long story short, I kind of straddle two worlds. So um, I play with both and sometimes they make friends and sometimes they don't. And then as far as the actual form goes, it always, in a sense, comes back to the body for me, the human form. And then I'll see form in landscape, but I'll see like a, a human form that I, it feels like a human form in the landscape. At the moment, I'm working on flowers. But again, there's like, there could be body parts, there could be flowers. And I think what I'm trying to do in a sense is like find the interconnectedness. We are part of the earth and we are part of it. We are organic forms and we do go back to that and we do come from that. There's this sense of always wanting to expand on the beauty of nature that is in us.